Welcome back. Uh, I'm proud to introduce our next guest as truly one of the greats in the world of rock and roll. Uh, here on Midday, we actually don't do as many interviews, maybe as we should, with rock and roll artists. It's a main part of our society, and I am crazy about rock. This is Mr. Lou Reed. Let me tell you about Lou's background. He has the ability and has demonstrated the ability to combine high artfulness, artfulness with a street level content it was a driving force behind the Velvet Underground in the 1960s and is seen by many music critics as practically inventing new wave music back then. Uh, he's, his work has really affected many musicians working today. His album last year, Blue Mask, was picked by top music critics as one of the 10 best albums of 1982. He returns to live performance tonight in New York City at the bottom line. Welcome. Welcome to Midday, Lou. Hello. Uh, what, what's your reaction when you hear music critics, people like me who just like music, describe you as uh, practically inventing new wave music back in the 60s with the Velvet Underground? I wonder if it was true. Yeah, I never thought of that that way. Um, music critics say lots of things. It's I read some place that if you if you believe them when they say something good about you, then you have to believe them when they say something, say something, uh, something bad. So you don't. I don't know if there's any validity to that. Um, if there is, I'm very flattered. Well, the, the appeal of the city, the appeal of the streets of New York, the East Village, I mean, it's, it's in your veins, it's, it's, it's part of your musical roots. What was there about life at that, when, when rock and roll was in this sort of where have all the flowers gone, kind of euphoria, <laughs> and you were doing this real hard-edged, raw city stuff, why were you doing that kind of stuff back in the 60s that made what you did then so avant-garde and what is seen now as a pioneering thing? Well, we set out to do that. I mean, we thought about it, and we were from New York, and all that other stuff was going on in uh, the West Coast and San Francisco and London. Uh, I don't know what was going on in London. Well, the Beatles. Oh, we never. Um, I never liked that. No. No, I never liked the Beatles. I never really liked any British group. I don't think the British should play rock and roll. What, what do you? <laughs> what do you think they should play? I don't think they should play anything. <laughs> not even, not even, how about, how about the, I think the, I the think Royal Symphonic Orchestra? Oh, well, they just go out and sit down with their instruments? And that, they're good for that. Yeah. They're good for that, and I suppose they should learn how to cook. But uh, I like the Stones. I think they're like the only group. Some are Ray Davies, but, mo you know, I don't want to get into all negative things. It's no, just, no. You know, um, I never took British rock and roll seriously, and I still don't. What, uh, what rock and roll? It's not like listening to doo-wop or growing up on Motown yeah. and, and American groups could do all this great stuff but this this Anglophobia mm -hmm. that has existed mm -hmm. as far back as I can remember but what we were doing to go back to the flower child business yeah. was that had no relationship to the reality that we knew by we I mean yeah. myself and the other people in the Velvet Underground and we had as a goal to put together rock and roll songs that really had something to do with what was really going on for us in New York and around us and had some basis in reality as opposed to this, this junk.